How great it is to be here on the Feast of Pentecost, the day that God sent forth his Holy Spirit upon the earth. And on this Feast of the Sending of the Holy Spirit, we are reminded in a special way that, that, that God does not merely call us to freedom from sin, but he calls us to a life of intimate union with him. And today on this Feast of Pentecost, sometimes we forget just how big of a feast today is. But in fact, it's one of the three biggest feasts of the year for us Catholics, right up there with Christmas and Easter. All three of these feasts are celebrated, or have been celebrated in the history of the church, with an eight-day celebration, where we celebrate for eight straight days what happened on that day. At Christmas, we recall how God became man so that man could become like God. And at Easter, we recall how Jesus Christ rose from the dead and defeated death and sin for all of eternity. And on this day of Pentecost, we celebrate how God sent his Holy Spirit, God himself among us, so that we could live in his life of divine union. But to understand what this means, we have to look at the Old Testament a little bit. We all recall the story of Moses leading ancient Israel out of the desert. They sacrificed the Passover lamb, and then they ran out of slavery into the desert. Then they wandered there for 50 days. And in those 50 days, yes, they were free from slavery, but they weren't fully connected with God yet. But on the 50th day, Moses went up the mountain and received the law, the law that Israel identified so, with so much for all of their history. They loved the law so much because they knew that that was what made them a people that belonged in a special way to God. They studied it, they meditated on the law, and they loved the law. And the law was entrusted to Moses to help usher it to the people, to help guide them into this life of union with God. And then if we look at the New Testament, we see a lot of parallels. We see a lot of things that look the same. In the Old Testament, the lamb was slain, that led Israel to leave slavery of Egypt. And on Good Friday, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ himself, was slain so that we might have freedom from sin and death. And after he conquered death, we fast forward 50 days to today, to Pentecost, the day that he sent his Holy Spirit, the day that he made us a people peculiarly his own, just as he did for Israel with the law. And so for the Holy Spirit, we should meditate on who the Holy Spirit is. We should pray for the Holy Spirit to come and help us to live that life that God wants us to live. And we should obey the Holy Spirit, however he might move us to live. Because if Israel followed the law to be God's people, how much more should we follow the Holy Spirit to be God's people in union with him? But who is the Holy Spirit? Every Sunday during Mass, we recite the Creed, and we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. By saying that the Holy Spirit is Lord, we acknowledge that he is God. God gives God himself to us as in a most personal, personable gift. God is both gift and giver to us on this day of Pentecost. And then we look at the title of giver of life. The Holy Spirit calls us to a new life, not just the life of this flesh, but this life of God's life. He wants us to act as God acts. For instance, in the second reading today, St. Paul says that it is only by the Holy Spirit that we can say that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, everybody can say those few words, but to mean it, to believe it, and to allow those words to unite ourselves more closely to God, we need the Holy Spirit. And I think we can imagine for a minute a parent with their small child. If you've got a kid that's one or two years old, I think you can imagine this one pretty easily. We can imagine when you embrace your child, sometimes you squat down next to them and you embrace them. You get down on their level to embrace them. And that's what happened when Jesus Christ became man. That was God lowering himself to embrace us. But parents can also lift up their kids so that their kids can embrace the parents on the parents' level. On the level higher than what that kid is possible to on his own. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us today. The Holy Spirit lifts us up so that we can love God as God would have us love him. So that we can say, Jesus Christ is Lord. 
so that we can think of God the Father and cry out, Abba, Father. And in this relationship, we're called to a special intimacy. We're called to more than just following the checklist, following a checkbox. I think as Catholics, I know I've been through this phase in my life. We're so quick to say, did I check all the boxes? Have I gone to Mass this week? Have I gone to confession in the last year? Have I avoided the really big sins? I think we sometimes fall into that thing where we just check off those laws that we're given. But how often do we think about going further than just the bare minimums? And for another image on this, we look at marriages. I think of my brother because he just got married last year, and so it's pretty fresh, the dating experience that he went through. If he would have, in dating, his current wife said, okay, I texted her today, check. We've gone on a date this week, check. And um, I haven't done anything to really annoy her, check. <laughs> they would not be married today. And so if avoiding the checklist mentality in our relationships with others is what allows us to actually have relationships? Why do we sometimes let ourselves fall into that checklist mentality with God? God wants us to have that intimate union with him. And that's what he gives us with the Holy Spirit. When we have the Holy Spirit within us, we are able to look at God and see him face to face, even in this life, not just in heaven. And so when we look back to the analogy of Israel leaving the slavery of Egypt, we see three main phases, and those are equivalent to the three phases of our own spiritual lives. They started off as slaves. They were miserable. They had no rights. They were worked to death. And that's what we're like when we're in the first stage of the spiritual life, when we're trying to shed ourselves of our, spirit, of our slavery to sin. And the Holy Spirit comes in and helps us to avoid sin, so that that way we can avoid doing those things that break that relationship off with God. And if that's where you're at today, pray for the Holy Spirit to help you shed those sins. But then we look to the second stage where Israel's not in slavery, but they don't yet have the law. They're in kind of this middle ground of freedom, but not quite in union with God. And I think we see so often in the world people that stress discipline and good practices and good virtues, but they lack the presence of God in their life. And if you're in that situation today, that's the second phase of the spiritual life where we can move past just being free from sin and start approaching God himself in that union with him. And then the third phase, which is what we see when Israel receives the law where they are closely in union with God, sometimes we think that this mystical experience with God is reserved for those nuns who live in a cloister that spend 17 hours a day in the chapel. But it's not reserved just to them. Every Christian is called to a mystical union with God here on earth. And that's possible through the Holy Spirit. And as we progress through the spiritual life, we'll get to that point. So that hopefully at the end of our lives, we can all have that union with God so that heaven is an easy transition from what we've already been experiencing here on earth with our prayer and union with God. And so today on this Feast of Pentecost, we remember... We're not called merely to freedom from sin. We're called to join in on that love of God, that fellowship with the Holy Spirit, so that we too might cry out one day, Abba, Father.